Whitney Biennial, the press preview for 2014. Stay tuned. Wait, wait. That was not my bones, that was the mic. Although it's been a long week, a um, few weeks installing the Biennial. Welcome everybody, I'm Adam Weinberg, the Alice Pratt Brown Director of the Whitney Museum. It's a great pleasure and honor to have you all here for the 2014 biennial. Um, the last one in the Breuer building, at least for the time being. This is the 77th in an ongoing series of annuals and biennials that began in 1932, um, just after the Whitney Museum opened its doors. Over the years, the biennial has become an essential element of the Whitney's identity, and it's key to understanding the Whitney's identity. Each biennial reaffirms the Whitney's primary mission of placing artists at the center and offering the full faith and energy and structure and support of the entire museum. It's the one time that the entire staff and everybody associated with the museum is all in one place and doing one thing. For the 2014 biennial, 103 participants have been invited to show their work and many of them have created work specifically for the exhibition. Each biennial is unique to the vision of its curators. In the past, multiple curators have collaborated to create a single, holistic view. However, the 2014 biennial has been curated by three exceptional observers, Michelle Grabner, Stuart Comer, Anthony Elms, who have each independently curated one floor of the museum. This biennial of biennials is a fitting way to mark our history in the Royal Building before moving downtown together, moving downtown next year. This is a transformative moment for the Whitney, and I'm happy that these three visionary curators have shared it. Okay, this is a piece by Charlemagne Palestine. <laughs> it's, it's the beginning of the stairs. Oh. Another part of it here, maybe this goes all the way to the top. Well, we're gonna start out at the, the top and uh, work our way down. As they said, this is a show that's featuring over 101 artists. So I'm not gonna be able to uh, capture everything, but I'll try to pick out some highlights and uh, give you a sense of uh, what's on exhibit here. These are a couple of paintings by Galen Gerber and one of them is with David Hammonds, Sherry Levine and the other is with Tevor Shimarzu. Well, again they've uh, done a horrible job of uh, giving us the proper information and uh, dimensions and titles. So we're going to uh, wing a lot of this. That's the wrong man vibes, bodies. This piece is by Gretchen Bender, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, he passed away probably 15 years ago. I think this is a uh, heat shrink plastic. by Kim Lun. It's titled Midway Shopping Plaza 2014. Uh, 
and oh, this has got to be about 20 feet tall. This is a piece and a set. It's by Shana Luker. Yeah, we just at the window. I just sent you a picture. And here we've got a couple of pieces by David Dow. David's a longtime uh, New York painter, and uh, he's got an exquisitely elegant uh, approach. He's saying that this is his second biennial. I think the first one was back in the early 70s. So he says, uh, keep the faith and uh, eventually they'll come back and take a look at you. It might take 30 years. Well, oh, there's Walter Robinson. So this is the main gallery space. And, uh, I believe this is the floor that uh, Michelle Grabner curated. We've got some uh, large ceramic pieces by Sterling Ruby. Is these the Basin Trilogy? Seems like I've seen a lot of uh, people that have been doing ceramic sculpture. Okay, so we've got video by David Robbins. And I think this might also be David Robbins. We've got a kind of a little installation here in the corner. Very beautiful woodwork going on here with the inset glass. Got mahogany, pine, oak, coco bolo. This looks like a little confessional booth. This is by David Woodruff. Text. Makes me think of Richard Prince. Uh, she's interesting as part of my spies, a young woman doing the same thing across the way. Uh, how's that hand? Okay. Well, there's Adam Weinberg. Well, I'm feeling very nostalgic. I've been coming to these things for about 30 some odd years and it's it's kind of sad that this is going to be the last one, Adam. No, it's not. It's the, I, it's, the it's, last it's one here. Last chat, right. It's the last chapter. It's the last. You know, Whitney's always forward looking. Right, uh, so we're going to have a, just another chapter starting downtown. Exactly. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I feel sad about it a little bit, but uh, it'll be closer to Brooklyn. <laughs> Some nice little uh, weavings here by. Sheila Hicks from pineapple fibers, cotton and metallic fiber, cotton and paper. And uh, it's like a giant macrame. Also by Sheila Hicks. That's pretty big. I've got a uh, trio of sculptures here by Alma Allen. That's some beautiful, beautiful wood. It's marble. Makes you think of a bourgeois piece. Well, this little installation is all by Joel Otterson. 
and I guess it's actually four different pieces. So he's done these chandeliers with crystal goblets. And we got the tent is uh, lace. And this very decorative hanging. It's got uh, classic beads and uh, it's like antique tools. Oops, I stepped over the line. <laughs> Well, we grabbed Michelle, grabbed her. Okay, so you were out touring around for about 18 months. How many studios did you visit? Mm, 130, a little bit more. And you, you were telling me that you actually started like in Seattle or someplace in the northeast or the... Yeah, I went, I went, to, the, I went to Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Uh, and then the Midwest and then San Diego up to Seattle. And, you know, New York when I was here for you know, business. I would hit the studios on the east coast. But there's big squashes in the southwest that I didn't do. And a little uh -oh. bit in Texas. I was in Texas a little bit, but I have to say I missed some of the southwest. Okay. One of the questions I have that I think a lot of people would be interested in is, uh, in all your touring around and uh, visiting all the studios, was there any kind of uh, unifying sensibility that you noticed emerging? Anything that would tie all these people together somehow? No, actually, it, it, no. I, I want to say that I was trying to be attentive to that, but. I would go into a studio and then I'd go into another studio and it would befuddle me in terms of what that artist was doing, their relationship to ambition, um, language, um, you know, a relationship to a commercial world or to a non-commercial world. So uh, it kind of undid itself along the way. So I had to be overgeneralizing when it came to, the, came to organizing the exhibition and how it was installed, thinking about three themes, um, you know, one of them uh, painting by women artists, um, thinking about affect and materiality and thinking about critique. So, um, yeah, as a teacher would build a curriculum, I ended up uh, uh, structuring the floor that way. So all of the, the best laid plans sort of went down the tubes. You just had to get out there and make it happen from what the raw materials That's were. That's right. That's exactly right. I had to come back in and build it, yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Dear. All right. Good yeah. luck. Thanks. Well, that was very nice of Michelle Grabner to give us a little uh, chat. Now, this piece is a collaborative piece sculpture and a painting of Pam Linz and Amy Silman. So, it's an oil on canvas. And uh, so we've got some ceramic pieces that she's added here on the back. A couple of pieces by Donna Nelson, and uh, Don has been painting in New York for a long time. And one of the uh, cool things about her paintings is that uh, she works on both sides of them, and she likes to goob on the paint. She kind of makes me think of a Joe Zucker. So you uh, get one of these pieces and uh, you get two for the price of one, the front and the backs. These are pretty big too, those are probably about uh, six and a half by seven footers. Well, we've got a couple of paintings here by our old Williamsburg painter, Dan Walsh. Those are about six foot square. We've got a painting and some ceramic sculpture by John Mason. I guess this is ceramic as well. This is a big painting by Molly Zuckerman Hartung. I don't know, that might be titled No but maybe not. She's uh, sliced these stripes into the canvas. Well, we've got a couple of straight 
examples of abstract expressionism by Louise Fishman. I've been looking at this weird piece. It's by Laura Owens. And it's ink, silk screen, ink, vinyl paint, acrylic, and pastel, paper, wood, solvent, transfer, a whole lot of things. And uh, I haven't seen any of Laura's work that was like this. It kind of slipped into a more of a uh, pop art thing. It's kind of uh, phony cuts and everything or shading is very nice kind of trompe l'oeil. That's got to be about 13, 14 feet tall. I'm going to wrap up this episode of the 2014 Whitney Biennial here. Make sure you come back and see the rest of the show. There's a lot of good stuff coming up. Thank you, Kate. Angelo, Chris, and Risa, right? Thank you.